uh, now we get into an even more rare type, uh, which is our ego projected friends. Ego projected authority overview. Truth comes from the ego slash heart. Leading questions. Does this serve me? Um, also, like, what's in it for me? I love it. That was <laughs> like, you really like, and you feel like a jerk initially because you're like, oh no, you sound selfish, but it's literally like we will get lost in everybody else. This like seven open centers projecting into other people, it becomes like whack a mole and it has to be like, what's in it for me? And like, am I getting more out of this than I'm putting in? That's a big one. Yeah. Because otherwise, am I getting enough? Are you getting sufficiently out of it for what yeah. you're putting in? Is what you're really saying? Because sometimes you'll get less out than you actually put in, but it felt so good that you know yeah. you did it. In. Yeah. Well, and I like to think of it too, because it's like the will center. It's like the heartbeat, right? And so, like, it pumps and then it retreats, and it pumps and it retreats. But like, in what order to great, pump forward, <laughs> I love like, that one. That's thank a good you. one. Thank you, thank you. And but in order for the heart for it to pump forward, there needs to be more blood that's going to be coming rushing in to like fill that void. Mm -hmm. So like that's like a big thing that I've come to found find. Yeah, no, I totally see that. Um, this leading question. So whenever we're dealing with the types and the different types of authority, you know, we could craft lots of leading questions. Does this serve me? Really, does this serve my love of me and my motion? Is your always your thing? Does this serve my love of me in my motion, hopefully, forward, you know? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm going to write that down later. Wait, <laughs> That's what the replays are for. Replay. It's so oh, good. Yeah. yeah, I can't. I almost never repeat these things. Um, yeah, uh, he, he does that. He just, like, you know, just beautiful well, so, words roll out. And then you're like, can you repeat that? So He's the like, next question. I don't know what they were. <laughs> The, the next question that, that, that would go along with does this serve me is the existential question that goes with all projectors. There's only one that's this common, ubiquitous, existential. It's what's making you guys guide us. It's this energetic question inside your genome, making your awareness ask, who are you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who, who who is this other and and every single other as soon as there's a contact between you and another there's this uh, what do they want from me or there's this like who are you or there's this i know who you are and this is what you there's always a who are you mm -hmm. and so it's it's that question goes in who are you what are you all about what's this all about what are you all about you got to mm -hmm. put that in with does this serve me and that in fact that whoever they are leads heavily into does it serve you actually if you think yeah, about it well because the projector it's like we're eating the other person's energy like i will yes. become who i am with and i've been in some weird places with some weird people so yep. like, i've learned to be a lot more careful of it because it's just like i'm going to be taking that in so heavily you are the eaters of it yes the yeah. eaters the penetrating eaters whose auras are, <laughs> are are fixing us in a place you know have you wondered why this guidance about the projector has been so like oh the projectors are here as the guides have you wondered what to make of that at times? I mean, I could see all the generators buzzing around making a mess of things. Right, right, okay, <laughs> right. So that's on the surface. And yeah. that implies a certain amount of middle management, yeah. like actual we guidance could, in no, a we way. we fix the glitches. We're the right, code right. glitchy finders. But it's like, more than that. It's okay. so much more. Well, and it's so much more than that. That's really just the tip of the iceberg because you've already noticed very often you're not recognized by the generators to, to leave them. And that's okay too. You come back around. You're always recognizing the timing of even when to come back around because it's not personal. Um, it's this other stuff that you're always doing to us. Tressa and I had this discussion. I text her every once in a while. I text her a lot of the thing that pops in my head. I texted her this notion. I was like, I figured out why projectors are are our guides ubiquitously fully. It's every time your aura is penetrating us, it incessantly makes us look at whatever it is you're looking at. And since you're looking at who are you, suddenly I'm doing what the gen and the generator already has an existential question. Do you remember our question? Yeah, who am I? Who who am I? Who am I? Who am I? What am I? What what am I to this? Who am I to that? I'm generating. I'm trying to make a response. What am I to this? You know, who am I? And so your aura penetrates and puts us into that. And that creates human direction. The more we see who we are, the more we move away from trying to generate war and trying to generate just profit and trying to do this insidious things that have now plagued and wormed their way into our society. In, in, in these really, you know, ungodly 
you know, godless ways in some cases. So yeah, that's what we're after. You can say if you agree or disagree with that. Oh, so wait, can I finish with a previous? Yes. Um, yeah. An addendum to the last thing that Danny said, the generator question of who am I and where am I going? And maybe just because that's like my yes. way to my identity. It's like- Because we live out the G center. The G center is what we're living out here. What yeah. our, is our love pushing a direction, you know? Yeah. But, and then, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just getting the, the last question that's like been a really relevant one for me is, do I like where I am? Right, it's mm. the will to the identity. Do I want to be where I am and in the direction that I'm going? That's been a really big one that's helped me like open up and understand my authority better. The brilliance and the beauty of these other authorities that only consume one, two, and three percent of the population, or you know, and less at times, is the myriad of questions. When you're a well-defined generator, I'm a well-defined generator that blunts my questions into one thing. You know, it is only who am I, you know, half the time is what I really have to keep asking myself. And you guys get to, especially projectors, the projector always gets to fan out and sophisticate these questions that they use to guide their direction. Um, and, and that's another thing. So the projector sophisticates everything, but that's probably in a future slide, Moana. Decision time frames immediately, however long it takes to let clarity come. What do you Ooh, think of that? What do you think of that? That's a really good way to like present that information because yeah, there's sometimes where I'm like, hell yeah, I'm into it. Like I could feel my heart is like, hell yeah, go in this direction. It's like a flutter. And then other times it's like very decidedly meh of just like, is my heart into it or not? Is it, it's either pulling me in that direction or it's very like, meh. And then it's Remember like, what I said before, it's okay to that. not know. It is mm -hmm. okay that, yeah, it's, I don't need to know. I, it's, yeah. I, so I don't know. Apparently I think I'm trying to make myself need to know, but I don't know. Oh you my know, God, the, yeah, the mental side of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's we'll a get... really good um, question or presentation with the time frame thing. Cause it could mm -hmm. be either. It could be very like right now, or like it could just take however long it takes until some other thing lines up into place. And then it's like, heart is a go. Right. And out comes the motor. Mm -hmm. So that motor does work a lot like a heartbeat. I love that about it. And, and, and it, sometimes it's a long stroke or a shorter stroke depends. It's, you know, um, you, you know, you're the one who knows, but it, it bursts, it, it sprints and then it holds and then it rests and then it sprints and then it rests. And it's always yeah. trying to keep itself healthy for those times when it needs to sprint longer than it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah. And there's That's also an genius. aspect. Yeah. There's also an aspect of like, am I like the identity center, right? It's like geomagnetic location of like where I am in space. And there could be like, a, I don't know, I don't know. So if I can share a funny story, um, I was mm. just at a Burning Man event in Florida and we go out and we build for it and it's like a big, exciting thing. And it was like, where to place the tents? And that, like other people kind of started to come up with their plan and that didn't feel like right for me. And then I was kind of like, okay, where do I go? And I was very like unsure and a little like jittery and stuff. And then like my boyfriend presents like, okay, what if we face them this way? And it was literally like, yes, that. And so like understanding like the placement of where I am meant to be and getting there, then everything clicked into place. We put all our tents and then it ended up that every other person had to move their tents to align with mine because that was going to be the best for the setup. So like the ego projector having that sense of where things should be in space. And then I got the go, got it going. And then all the other dominoes will fall into place. It's so indicative of the individual circuitry. It is the mutative one. And that's the one channel off the ego, which I find so interesting. The rest of the ego is about only the tribe. I mean, it is all it is tied down with a ball and chain to the tribe, which is beautiful. So we get and this one of the tribe. Right, right. But you're also part of it. So it's not, it's both. It's foot yeah. feet in both camps because it's that individual, unique, mutative thing that shows up. And you notice you didn't do the work to make the other tents align. You just provided the shock. 51 shocks. It's part of the cross of penetration, 51 and 57. So it is designed to make a penetrating shock. And so when, in that moment, when you're like, oh yeah, do you remember how fast that was? It was immediate, it was spontaneous, right? Yeah. And so there's the bluster of the ego pouring through this identity to make it be true because it happens spontaneously. The kid is always right, you know, and you see it, it keep seeing it because seeing it kills the not self. Um, and in that moment, it was so correct that spontaneously the other, tense fell in line and you probably have several instances like that in your life 
because sh shock and awe sometimes is your thing. Sometimes it's too much. You, uh, you've seen your share of blood um, on yourself and others. Is that true? Absolutely. And I'm six yep. and 36 for both of my nodes. Oh, so God. They, so you've seen your share of blood. Yeah. But yeah. I'll always survive the shock and the crisis. I have 51, six uh, exalted in Jupiter. So I'll always survive the shock. And even my crisis and impact things like my crisis, like one of them is exalted and stuff. And then well, what that 25 does is it is the landing pad. I, I'm a vessel, but I only have the 21. The 51 is not in my natal chart. It's in my Chiron return, but that's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so I've always been the shock absorber of the shock. And so I've always been excited like a like a bug to the light, like a mosquito to the light whenever there was shocking things to do. You know, and luckily, whatever it was that held me back from time to time from doing it too much, it probably saved me. But at the end of the day, that 25 is the innocence. Mm -hmm. It's the sh And it says a lot about humanity's direction. Humanity's direction is imbued with innocence. The uh, Again, the kid is always right. And, and you know, this really foreshadows uh, Rob didn't have anything to do with the Bible when he was pouring the stuff out. And yet he speaks of biblical things throughout all of it, like to, almost to the letter. The kid is always right. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Bible, that's the same. You know, it's like you know, they'll inherit the earth, mm -hmm. essentially, the meek. And yeah. And anyway, it's that's the innocence shocking. and the good will always prevail. The evil the, well, is weak essentially they yeah. well and but they don't always prevail because 51 sixes can leap to their leap to their demise that's okay that was if it was spontaneous it was the right leap for them we all got to go sometime you know that that's that's the thing but they are the big oops follow me and they didn't know they were going to say follow me a moment earlier necessarily hence the tent and everyone else orienting it the same way Love that, Moni. I have a funny story. Jesus, too. I love you guys. I love you, ego guys. <laughs> when we're in a good place. Go ahead, Moana. Like, this is the up. funny story. So this is the story of how I got acquainted with Moni. So this is what I do, people. Um, maybe it's my four. I'm like, I need people to share themselves on the air. And I don't have a giant pool. So let me just go ask some people and see if they're cool with coming on. And my question was, you know, is there any self-projected and ego-projected projectors in this group? And I got, you know, a slew of self-projected people. And I'm like, wow, I guess ego-projected is pretty rare. Um, <laughs> and then, which brings it is me rare. Blood, right? Half it's a, a rare projector. I kind of learned that firsthand with the just seeing nobody say anything until Moni uses... If for anyone who's watched the Inside Out movie, she used a gif of joy, like waving, <laughs> and I lost it. I'm like, oh my god, unicorn! And then she responds back with a unicorn emoji, and I'm like, we gotta have us. <laughs> she seems like a who she uses the best gifts and isn't just flat out thinking I'm a weirdo for asking to have her on a show on the internet no and you know That's i can it. imagine the <laughs> yeah the, i can imagine the projector groups are all excited to hear that kind of thing um no it's not I, a projector group. it was just, it was just like human, human design, design and astrology or something I think. Oh, okay yeah, okay. That's yeah. 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 but no. then it was fun because I, I didn't see like your comments that further from that and then i woke up to like two voice messages and i was like okay who is this what is this and there's this delightful like recognition and invitation so thanks that's wonderful. L leave it up to the impactor, you know? It's a good okay. thing. Um, but, what are uh, we reading here? Yeah, so I was going to oh. say, Moni, you can, you can tell us, like, do you think this is true, that because of the type of projector you are, you really need to um, rely on your strategy and authority than just waiting on invitations? Like, you really got to use those two in... Um, I guess in a waiting on invitations within a spontaneous existence as it relates to your movement, you know, with others primarily. And, well, I shouldn't say primarily, at least half with others and half with yourself. Um, so there, it, there's a spontaneous nature sitting inside of all of this, and it's not a splenic spontaneousness. So you're always having to be careful about not going too far. Um, but, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, I have to make sure I'm putting my will into the right thing because it's going to use that. 
you know, it's like, I feel it's like with generators, it's like you, you got like a regular, like fill up on your gas tank or whatever, right? Like you can go and then like, you'll have that energy if you're doing it correctly. I feel like with like ego, it's like the nitro boost where you feel like, cool, I can like boom in and you can go really fast for a little bit and then that's going to drain out and then you got to like lay down and like fill it back up. So I'm How have you been with the laying down? How have you been with the, good. So you honor this whole, you just allow, you allow. Now I do. I used to not pre. He used to not. Like, yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. It, was, it was a mess. I used to bartend was a mess. I around. I was, I mean, I was a great bartender. I did all the things, but then I'd be drained and exhausted and I was yeah. trying to do everything like everyone else. And why doesn't it work? And I completely like broke my body. I went through this whole crazy, like health neuro crisis thing. And then with human design and starting to live correctly is where I started to learn it. And I've got a good audio by Ra on just sacral conditioning. I'll be happy to send it to you after. Please. Yeah, yep, please. Yep. And then yep. um, I started going to Burning Man events uh, a Good several you. years ago. Yeah, thank you. And so, I mean, definitely th third mm. line bumping into every mistake and overdoing it and then like freaking out and having a meltdown and going through all of that, but then being able to like really like needle in my experience and learn how to take care of myself because being in an extreme environment, which is my uh, design side earth. So like, I feel like I ground myself by penduluming through extreme environments and then finding my way of like, okay, cool. I can do something and then I rest for a bit and then I do something and I lay down and I do something and I lay down and I can kind of coast on other people's sacral energy, but then I got to go lay down. So right. I will do that everywhere. I'll bring like a thing to lay down on. And then like when it's time to party, like I'm there and I will also be the last one up. When everyone else is done, I'm right. laying down and resting so perfectly throughout. I can be the last one up dancing and enjoying myself without crying out. Right. And no one misses it. You're not missing anything. No. And you haven't missed. Been, you haven't met. No. Right. I stay, I've, done, I've done it before where you stay like, oh, but everyone's hanging out. We're going to do the thing. And you stay for. And right. then I end up draining myself completely. And then I need to go lay down and crash and miss the really good stuff. Well, your one definition is unique only. <laughs> it's you it's centering circuit. The centering circuit is is definitely looking inward and it's so unique and so individual in its nature that it's the only way to really be, you know what I mean? It's gotta be in the mood. It's just gotta be in the mood. Back to does it feel good? Did no, you say no, you're forty six five? She has a reading later. Raining oh. you back in. I'm 46. Bro, <laughs> oh, she's raining us in. We have to be rain in, shock lady. We have to. Three. Yes. The you absorber to the your, shock monster. We will look at your chart. Oh, that's me to, that, yeah, that's me to Moni. That's me at Moni. I'm, uh, the shock absorber to the shock monster. We're being rained in over. Oh. <laughs> 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 I definitely cannot stand the shock. <laughs> so go ahead, Moana, rain us oh, in. Right. We, so, uh, yeah. You, you you can tell me about your experience of like having to have people come and extend invitations. I have no idea what that feels like. Danny has no idea what that feels like. It's really, it's, it's a weird one. It's a really <laughs> weird one, especially like I find for like, cause we're not like the typical projector because I also just like the 25 is like with inanimate objects. So most of the time I feel like I'm being invited by like inanimate objects and space like creating spaces, renovating things, designing, um, like creative stuff, like inanimate objects. Like I feel like if I'm in a space and like it's not arranged properly, like I feel like, oh, that chair just really wants to be moved. And I like will rearrange spaces like at parties and events and things. I'll get a lot of those. With people invitations, it's kind of like funny because I'll often get like the premonition early and then I'll jump the gun. So then I've learned to like hold back. But like for one example, um, one of my bestest, bestest friends, um, she moved out to Salt Lake City and she's amazing. She's a total badass. And because I've like helped her, uh, she's a man, Jensen, each, I'm her projector. I've helped her in the guiding of things. So then like she ended up like last year inviting me to this like new festival that's starting that she's fire performing at. She like arranged everything, like got me a flight, had all like the tent and supplies needed, like had an RV. So we went down there. Like she provided all the resources to be able to like bring her money out and bring her magic to meet everyone. And like, so nice. she feels like she definitely like recognizes me so, so much. And then will then like introduce me to other people and then like spread that like, oh, this one's a good one. Like this one will help your life. 
um, kind of things. So that's been like a good You've one. You've got Other the right profile. You've got the right profile for your definition. Just period. <laughs> your profile and this definition, they go hand in hand. Cool. Yep. So like as so a what's next? projector, right? So your, your, your success is going to be a balancing act of self-interest, right? With decision-making and then preparing for the invitation. So like, how do you juggle all of that? <laughs> <laughs> I take care of myself a lot. I take care of myself a whole lot. Like I said, I'm constantly laying down. Like I'll do something and I'll lay down and I don't nap, right? Because everyone's like, oh, go take a nap. Or it's like, rest. And you're like, no, go be horizontal. Like, go. <laughs> like, yeah, I get that. Because it's Believe annoying. Me, I just lay down. Rest. Like, you know, like it's too vague. Like, go be horizontal. I call it my horizontal intermission for one of the missions. <laughs> Yes, we need to make shirts. Because <laughs> it's perfect. Be right back. Gonna do it, my yeah. horizontal intermission. Oh, that's gonna be a great shirt. It's yeah. like the biggest, biggest thing because it's just like we can get so buzzed out. I'm doing this and starting this and doing this and doing this, and then you'll keep going and think you're Superman, and then like end up being like a wake of like half started projects. But if I yeah. do something and I lay down right away, and I do something and I lay down, like it's just this yo yo thing then I could be the one who will be up dancing at like <clears> seven in the morning because like I'm laying down periodically and just being there for the good stuff. So that's the like best, the biggest. The vessel as an incarnation cross is this adaptability and, and if not even adaptability, but with your profile makes it adaptability to the extremes. It's a full mm -hmm. absorption of the extreme spectrum that can even take place and in inside of humanity, especially. Um, and the extreme nature of inanimate objects and the extreme nature of yourself. Everything about the vessel is about extremeness. Um, but it's not necessarily shocking extremeness. You need that definition for that. It's not necessarily emotional extremes or this or that. No, the vessel tends to be very cool. But that ego is always wanting, is always wanting. When the ego is actually projecting this authority, the ego wants its I to be heard and it's back to spontaneousness and it should just the ego people have to get have to become aware of that um it's not egoism to want i to have i lead with so much of what is said that's yeah. all and if i take care of myself that's like a big thing too which has been fun at like burns and stuff and camping where it's just if i take care of myself then i could know what other people need if i notice like there's a party several years ago where like middle of summer, like day of like the, both air conditioners break. And this is like underground rave type of party. Right. So everyone is just like melting. And I was like, well, this is silly. And I had a Ziploc bag. So I took ice and put it on my like neck and shoulders and my wrists. And then I made myself more comfortable. And then I see our DJ looks like he's about to faint. So I like give it so to you him. Did that, right. But then it gets better. Cause then I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just take like, a box of Ziploc bags and like make 20 of them and distribute them through the party. So I went around right. going being like a little ice fairy and got to just like take care of every single other person and everyone just seeing them like melt with gratitude and comfort. So it's like that this kind is, of thing. It's this like, is the essence of the spontaneity I'm referring to. So to, to, to take back into stock, the projector mastering systems, right? So I'm going global back to global, you know, the big question, the big things. So the recognition of the systems to master, it takes on such spontaneous nature in you um, that if you think about it, so you mastered the system of putting those ice bags on people and it's a skill you may never need again, but the joy and the uniqueness in a pulse of being empowered to master that, you know, this is, to recognize that is to wake up to whom you are. It's it's a beautiful thing. You told the story, so I see you see it, you know. Okay. It's good. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I probably I probably digress. I'm certain I do somehow. I'm other. loving all of she'll, this. She'll tell me. <laughs> Amazing. The queen Hi, will tell me. Yeah, the queen. <laughs> Mona, you can, you can finish us up with the last point. I'm on the last one. Cool. Uh, yep. Ego projected authority entails consistent drive, strong ties to the material realm and significant openness, demanding self-focus and self-worth recognition. Yeah. I always find the weirdest, coolest stuff to share that will make now, your life better. Is it demanding? So you tell us, is it demanding or is it simply having? It has this um, uh, recognition, self, you know, the self-focus and self-worth. Um, 
I, that's a you know, recognition. Certainly. I think what it's trying to say is that unless you 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 intentionally make sure that you work on your self worth or have it consistently mm -hmm. and have self self focus, not in the self focus that like you know this is my words are just we got to take care of ourselves first. Like at the basic level, well, this, like yes. we need to take so care of ourselves and our own resources. Exactly, well, everything yeah. is is. It says like me, up. me first. It's like yeah. the, the 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 airplane thing, right? It's like put, put your, your own oxygen, own oxygen mask, mask yeah. first. Yeah, because right? I'll have and, all the goodies for everyone if I take care of me first. That's it. Yeah, because it's like we're gonna care about other people, but it's just like we need. To it's natural. Care, like, it's nature. Yep. Yeah, because right. otherwise it's like we'll, we'll fry out. And I used to do that, trying to help everyone and take care of everyone and do this. And then you're just like, oh, my God, I'm exhausted and bitter and resentful. Whereas it's just like, no, I know when I need to take care of myself. And then I could pop out and help. And then it's like, help someone. It's like, cool, you got to go take care of it. Like, you can handle it, you know. Mm -hmm. So do yeah, you feel exactly. when you have to make a decision that you feel it in your chest? It's like, oh, okay, let's, like, focus on what that feels like. Is that true for you? That's been growing. That's been like, that's been developing, especially within the past year. I actually visited my other ego projector friend in Salt Lake City and she did an amazing biofield tuning session on me and like broke this boulder off of my heart. And I like, just felt it like, like grow three sizes um, and like really start to lead me. So I feel like before the vessel of love was so hurt. I used to be a vessel of hate, you know? Uh, and so- That is our binary. We're, we're yeah. cursed with it. I mean, a curse, we're endowed with it. Yeah, I mean, um, if we're loved and, and cared for, then like we will be the most loving everything to somebody. Um, but you know, past experiences were different for me to learn these things. So there's still like a remnant of that like stone vessel around my heart. So she like busted that open. And so then since then it's been growing more. And so it is neat. So like the eclipse that's coming up, I thought a whole plan was happening and then it like absolutely was not. But the whole time it didn't really feel right that previous plan um i didn't feel like that call is just oh i want to try to make this happen and then it all fell apart so i reached out to my other ego projector friend who lives under the the flight path and he invited us over and as soon as that happened like my heart was like a flutter like, yeah. Running yeah. Down, like oh. doing it yeah right. so it's like you nice. need to feel like oh that wasn't really an invitation and recognition previously it was just my presumption but it didn't never felt right but then when we did get like the good invitation it was like oh yes we are going in this direction let's have some fun wow so you've got the chance to to in a with awareness of your design recognize the juxtaposition of those two moments yeah right so and the one that you didn't feel like doing you knew you didn't feel like doing how long was that sitting there like a day or two uh, oh, we might go do this. Maybe we'll go do that. Or well, it's been it... like this weeks of because it was like, oh, I was gonna see it with the friends that I saw it with seven years ago, and then it was just, is this happening? Is it not? And it was this kind of, <clears throat> uh, 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 uh. and then it was finally like I like directly asked, and it's like, oh, they have a whole different plan that like I'm not even like part of it all. Um, right. And so it explained that like, and then there's like a little bit of the sadness and the bitterness. And I was like, no, I could have communicated better. And then it was right. just like my motivation is like guilt. So I was like, okay, how can I fix it? Because that's the thing. It's not always like, oh, I'm going to be invited to do this thing. It was like, I want to go there. I want to take my boyfriend there. Like, I want to be. I would like to do a few things. I want to do some things. Yeah. I want to do, want to do, instead of sitting on your hands hoping it gets done. Right. Yeah. And so with that, I was like, okay, who would I know under the flight path? And then I was like, well, I have this friend. Um, and then kind of like explained it, but I was like, I don't want to push. And then he invited me out, you know, and he's another ego projector who had the resource for the win. You right. know? So it's, it's right. a funny thing where it's like, it's not always like these direct invitations from people. It might be, I want to go do this thing. I want to be here. This is what I'm doing. You want to hang? And think about the chemistry. So human design is all about, you know, the genome ruling the chemistry. And it's the genome that picks up the differentiation at birth. It gets minted. It picks up its programming, essentially. It's programming for us up here on the surface. And and it's exact, it's, it's, it's written in stone. We're minted like coins at birth. And you take that subtlety and suddenly it's not subtle anymore. When you start to recognize my genome is putting me not in the mood. My not in the mood is taking my energy and directing it slightly differently. That slightly different direction is causing this other invitation to not really materialize. So it's that whole law of attraction thing. 
I mean, it's just, it's in, it's in spades. The genome hooks us into our law of attraction along with everything else, apparently. And it's just a beautiful thing. So subtle, so, so intrinsic. It's a beautiful thing. So then number nice. two, should I read number yeah. two? Yeah, uh, sure. Consider I was like, I think we kind of jumped into four, but you can, you can quickly- I'll just go through it. Through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so focus on the sensation in your chest when a decision is presented. Consider how the choice aligns with your desires and goals. Yeah, definitely. If your response is clear, take immediate action. Yeah, if it's like my body will propel me in that way. Um, if wow. uncertain, allow yourself more time to reflect. Yeah, definitely slow down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes I just get so excited seeing the potential. Like I can see like everything, how it could be made better. Like I have double 44.5, which is like the gate of making it nice. It's like, I can right. see something that could right. be made better all the time and having to like stop myself from jumping in on like other people in situations. So it's like, yeah, slow down. That reserved. I'm one, ab I'm one up. I'm the sixth line. I'm aloof. It's unconscious in me and an open spleen as well 44 is always looking at dude 44 is the regulator of what makes the tribe live or not essentially in its material way um you know it's incredible yep yeah uh number five clarity will eventually emerge guiding you towards what truly serves you that's a good thing that i needed to hear because <laughs> it's true but it's like man when you just well, like when it's out there go, go back one when it says um if uncertain also allow yourself more time to reflect allow yourself to time to reflect and time to not know yeah. oh i can i'm continuing to not know oh, hey are you certain give us a thing is the oh. juice there um well the juice ain't at 100 percent. i guess i don't know oh that's good i needed to hear that because yeah, my my open ajna is just like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you need to know you need to know you need to know you and need I to know figuring it out i'm like oh give it to yes. me <laughs> let me let me let me unknowingly make you a wretched slave Oh, yeah. God. Call me out. Call me out. Yeah, you're coming out. That's what the show's you're being pulled. Wait till he does we're your gonna, chart reading. Mona, oh, we're going to We're doing it now, by the way. I can't look at it. I know. You're, you're, you're doing bits of pieces. I'm Hold doing on. it from we're memory. We're almost at the end. <laughs> so, number I'm seven. already doing friends. it. If fear clouds your judgment, give yourself extra time for reflection. Yeah, that was a good thing to like double up on. Um, yeah, because there's sometimes so much of like, oh, but I want to be part of the thing with the people. But it's like, you don't have the energy for it. You're going to be exhausted. And then you're not going to be able to do the thing later you really want to do. Like, go lay down. Go chill. <laughs> and, and in those moments, if you ask, your, you can ask your own self by now, at least sometimes, do I actually feel like it? Mm -hmm. If someone's sitting there with a gun, one, two, three, go, do I just want to run towards it? Is that what I'm feeling? You know, and you know, almost always truthfully, the not self mind can't cloud that answer mm -hmm. you know you'll find and then seeing it kills the not self mind seeing it mm -hmm. kills it yeah that's good uh and then finally seven ultimately ask does this benefit me if yes you found alignment does yeah, it feel good yeah it's got to be yeah. worth my while it's got to be exciting it's got to be like i, I got to have enough reason to do the thing otherwise like invite me to something better mm -hmm. so primary conditioning how much of this do you resonate with? <laughs> Fear of appearing <laughs> selfish. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, it's gotten like users have like gotten my design. Um, but yeah, definitely before, because it's just like, no, I'm I'm not I'm not like the worker bee. I'm the, like the specialist who can come in and like done when it needs to be, but like I'm not your default worker bee, even though I used to be like, I'm a good, like, I'm a real good housewife, you know, like I'm really good at cleaning and making the things happen and figuring it all out. But like it's not always my role and knowing like mm -hmm. let the the big strong people do the the things that need to be big and strong it's, lifted it's, and whatnot. It's, it's very wise. It's we need our men, our men and our women to be women. And yes. we need our men and women together. The Phoenix is due to fly, you know. This change, this change is coming and we've been limping around. Zach Bush noticed it about four years ago and he said it out loud three years ago. And, 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 but he didn't know what he was referencing. I remember I wrote him a big long email, Zach, you referenced the Phoenix, <laughs> and, and like hardcore. And he's like, we've been limping along one point in time. We were somehow matriarchal more so. And we were limping along on one wing, not realizing we yeah, need our yeah. men. And then the men jumped in the driver's seat and, and they over. put the women aside uh, too much. And next thing you know, yeah, we're limping better. along on the next wing. And now it's time for bro like the black bird. Fix that broken wing, it's time to fly. 
So you know? my boyfriend is a sleeping phoenix, and he's also a DJ. And like, admittedly, I could be biased, but he's really fucking good. He's and a manifesting he's, generator. He's a manifesting generator. Single definition, defined will. Like he's brilliant, and like sleeping phoenix. And like when we are at Burning Man, when we are at like events and stuff, like there are times where like. I was just like exhausted in my tent, but I knew it was like energy. Like I knew I just needed to like clear some energy, but like I literally could not lift my body. And he started playing and I felt like my heart like come back to life and like flutter up. And he started playing and brought us to life. And I mentioned it to a friend. He's like, oh my God, me too. We were so like messed up in the tent and da da da. And as soon as he started playing, he br he brings people back to life. Our, our, the guy who's like in charge of our, our camp called said, uh, you know, he calls him a ringer because he can like get the crowd going. Like he was- The will ringer, yep. yeah, that's an old term. Yeah, That's, he would yeah. literally like bring this life, this like sleeping phoenix rising from the ashes. Like he will bring people back to life. So I have- And it's always rising. This, the sleeping phoenix is not the story of the phoenix that's sleeping. It's the story it's of the, that the sleeping phoenix is always waking up and rising, yeah. trying to rise. It's flying from the ashes too, yeah. from, like, the, from the dirt. Yeah. It's like the second Harry Potter where like, like Harry goes into Dumbledore's office and like the phoenix bursts into flames and he's gonna be mad. He's like, oh no, it's okay. It's it's a shame you had to see him on a burn day. So it's just like, <laughs> we're just coming at the end. Yes, like, hey, the yes. He's looking really scraggly. That's and funny. Like, Don't worry, he's like, he's coming back to life. It'll be okay. Like, you know, and trusting like how that all comes together. So you, yeah. You know, with this ego willpower of yours, it must be fun at times. And if you haven't done it much or noticed, you'll notice you are. Um, I hijack ego willpower all the time. Whenever someone has an ego, I'm suddenly doing something. Oh yeah, have an totally open do ego. It. They yeah. totally do and it. so, and, and but you can hijack the sacral all oh, you absolutely. want. And so you, yeah, and so you w will experiment over time with like I, I, I too much. It's still working, but I already know it's too much. I'm going to pay for this. I'm paying for this tomorrow, even yeah. though you you, you realize you're, there's still some kind of sacral juice pouring through you. But you can totally play with that. Oh yeah, I do this it's, at parties and burns all the time. This is literally what I do. We're like, I will go lay down. I will bring a pillow and go find a spot to lay down at the party and then like go dance. And like, I know I'm totally like, I got some of my will there, but I'm like totally yeah. feeding the sacral. Yeah, and yeah. I'll, I'll perform, I'll do all this stuff. And then I go lay down. Yes, for you, it's like a feast. It's feasting. Yeah. And, I love that. And also, this is really cool too. This was like last year. Then I would totally notice when I was in a good place, I just rested, I did my thing, and I'm coming out looking cute, performing, doing the thing. And I will see everyone around me lighting up. And like they're totally feeling feeding on my good, healthy, happy, well rested ego. And then as I got more and that fifth line of yours, and that fifth line oh, yeah. of yours. No, but get this, get this. This is really crazy too. But then, like as like you know, a time would go by, an hour or whatever, and I'd start getting a bit more tired and a bit like, should I lay down? And like literally, everyone around me would start looking and like looking really scraggly, or like all of a sudden, like the icky drunk people would be showing up, and like yeah, and like oh no. And then I'd go lay down. I'd rest, I'd clear some energy, I'd come back. And again, I bring this like happy energy that then everyone else is like magnifying my will. And I'm like, oh, I need to be really careful and take care of myself because I'm messing everyone else up if I'm not. Not only that, you you get to you get to be real careful and choose the invitations that attract you because they're already attracted to you. They're already projecting upon me. They, they project that upon you. Um, and, and so you get to choose that wherever you go, whatever you do, you get to watch and whether you're strategic in your arrows or not is irrelevant. You get to just recognize, oh, they're projecting that on me, but you know what? I, I don't, I don't want that one. I, I want this one just like where you would go for the eclipse and so forth. Um, I got, I got a riddle for you. When you're at these events, what's the design of a crowd? Oh, with like the penta and the wah? Type of stuff just, or what? No, well, it, it, that part, that's part of it, I guess. But just generally speaking, it's single. If you, it, what's the design of the world? What's the design of a crowd? What's the design of a bunch of people in one spot? I mean, I would imagine, that, wouldn't that be like an emotional, like manifesting generator? Because Yes, I yes. I wanted, <laughs> you ha if you hadn't thought, you thought that through real quick and I get it. <laughs> but, but, but if you haven't thought that through, recognize everywhere you go, as mm -hmm. soon as there's three or four people, I mean, as soon as there's two people, chances are, mm -hmm. but three people, chances went up 100%, and five and 10 people, chances are essentially 100% that you're now an emotional manifesting, the world is an emo not self-emotional manifesting generator. So if yeah. you're finding all of this stuff, that's what I'm trying to get at. 
And so that's what we're trying to decondition. We got our work cut out for us. Now you know why me, the two fours on a mission to create an army of readers. You know what I mean? Um, I'm a good, I'm going to be a good soul and I'm a vessel. So I can, I, I don't mind being, I don't mind being insignificant. I'm a good soldier. You know what I mean? And I love to shine all at the same time. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind with your, your, as you're doing your thing, something's got you pretty much in a pretty good place. And it's all these recognitions that you're making because you could be miserable. You've already seen that. I used to be. <laughs> I used to be really miserable. Uh, when, did you, then, when did you first look into your design? When was the um, first time? The first time was 2018 where a friend wow. mentioned it to me like in the autumn and I tried to look it up and I like I, I was like okay what is this and then I tried to find ways to read it and I couldn't like find videos or anything and I was like okay whatever and then like six months later it was March 1st of 2019 and I came home from work and out of nowhere on like Facebook there's something something human design is like oh I remember that that was a thing I start reading it I was up till five in the morning I deep dive hardcore for two weeks because then I started massage school so like, I was like, right. I need to learn enough to have like a foundation of this to then focus on massage school while still picking up more. Or and you'll go I, crazy, right? Or yeah. You'll, yeah, yeah, I get it. Which is like, it. I was like, I can untangle this. Like when I want something and I want to learn something. And then um, through massage school, especially, I very much was just like, I'm focused on me taking care of myself. I had like crazy health issues going on. Um, and then in taking care of myself, living my design correctly. And then my boyfriend showed up six months later, entered it into correctly and everything just keeps getting better. Yeah, I love that. Well, this is this is where it's at. I mean, this is what we're looking to do is keep keep that mojo going, sort of just like that. I'm trying to move my computer. Sorry about that. Yeah. Was that what was the last? Uh, was there anything else on that slide? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sense of duty towards others, well being, girl, constantly, constantly. Like I have to like really stop myself, especially because it's like I said, I used to be a bartender, like a massage therapist. Like I I can take care of all the things, and then I gotta like stop um concern about being perceived as overly focused on material possessions i mean yeah you know like it goes into like the selfish thing but i always have and i find all the best weird little life and body things that makes everyone life better you're so a vessel this wouldn't be a thing that you would want to have every time you would see it in your own life you would be like ah, i don't really want that to be my direction yeah I'm it's only the good stuff like I want the yeah. like I'm like the chillest whatever hand me down kind of gal, and then like I'm gonna find the good stuff, or I'm gonna create it and modify it and stuff. Um, but that yeah, so, like it. yeah. <laughs> but, Belief yeah, that wealth accumulates um, contradicts altruism. Oh, definitely struggled with that previously, and have been kind of fixing and healing that. And I'm just like, no, no, I just need to make sure I can take care of myself, so I can take care of you know whatever, right. just take care right. of the world. Um, yep. notion that self-sacrifice is the only form of service yeah previously must did too far with that and then i've learned like no no hold it back they got it but then i could also swoop in and save the day when necessary but knowing where that line is of when do i jump in be that general whenever it feels good don't worry if you got yourself in too far you're designed to bump into things that don't necessarily work out you can't make any mistakes oh, just yeah. keep watching just keep oh, yeah. watching that. Yeah. I feel like I hold that 2551 of like, we're going to go somewhere weird, but it's okay. We You're perfect that. for that. It's a showman yeah. channel. That yeah, is exactly. the gate of the, the channel yeah. of, the, of the priest and the priestess. Yeah. And, and, and so like, I yeah. anchor that energy for that other person to have. And then also being able to like, when do I step in and when do I take care of the person and how? And every single time, like I might make a mistake, but I'm always learning each time that I'm helping in a ceremony. It's moments like, like that where the mistakes yeah. you make are a rolling set of corrections that are yeah. needed by the other person in the first place, delivered by the shocking recognizer with the ego will to do just that. It's amazing. I would stick with that all day long. There was obliged. one last point. Feeling oh, yeah, obliged to consider others' viewpoints oh. in decision making. There's nothing oh, really problem. wrong with that. Um, yeah, just no, not letting it take over my. Not letting it take over, right? Because right, that'll right. happen a lot. Where it's like, especially a lot of times where it's like the decidedly mesh response of the will. It's like I don't care, whatever, right. and making sure that I don't get taken on some direction I don't want to go because then I'll get weird. So. Yep, and the energy isn't there for it. So. So tips, yeah. All right. <laughs> gather information about a choice and release it, focusing on your body, particularly your chest and heart area. Yeah, that's really good. Take it in and, uh, and see what the heart does. Uh, well, the chest and body is the, is where a lot of the sensation will come. These are the centers that are lit up, giving you this authority. Yeah. I mean, physically in the body, that's where it's going to be. Yeah. 
Like, is it heavy and retracting backwards or is it like fluttery <laughs> and like jumping forwards? Is it telling you you're in the mood and feel like it or not? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 feeling stuck, visual, if you're feeling stuck, visualize a white light um, descending into your chest, um, turning into your heart's feelings. I didn't read that as good as I could have. Yeah, Morning, no, you always was, read that one better was, than I do. It was tuning, like think of it like a tuning fork, the white light oh. entering your heart. I like that, that's really sweet, I like that. Uh, and then we have the expansion, like Moni kept uh, describing, often signifies a yes. And if it's a contraction, it's probably a no. That's a good one to remember and like to like specify in that wording. That's good. Yeah, it's about the keynotes. That's what that's what this is all about. Get this mm -hmm. language in there so it's so it's working. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Then like every time you hear it, it hits a little different and you're like, ooh, 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 you take in like more little aspects of the keynotes. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't shy away from asking tough questions to get that clarity. Don't. I bet you do sometimes, but I bet you also totally don't other times. Um, yeah. Do you find yourself holding yourself back when you have something difficult to say like that? Because the open solar plex center does do that to us. Yeah, it'll I'm sometimes, <laughs> like I'll hold back and I'll hold back and then it's like, when he's quiet. And then it's like, then it could like explode. So I have to make sure I don't like explode it out but like it sometimes can be difficult because I have a completely open throat. So like no voice of my own. So sometimes it's just like completely not heard until screaming would happen. Uh, so I right. don't want to do that. Um, right. So trying to learn how to like, okay, how do I sooner say, hey, no, not cool. There's an issue. Whatever. How about in the moment when you have no choice in the matter and it's either tough or you don't say it? How about that? Like it's Where we can't talk about it. There's no, we can do no mental chatting about it it's too late it's, it's there it's oh, sudden and it's, it's spontaneous and you either have to say a hard thing or not that's what i'm referring to yeah no i mean i'll definitely be the one who says the thing that needs to be said at times Good. Even if it's like super Good. uncomfortable yeah no like it's like yeah i can bring some like really hard truth and like very much um change things or bring things to a halt or make truth things go in another direction yeah truth is shocking truth yeah. is shocking you know, um, very much so, yeah. That's definitely a thing where it's just, oh no, this needs to be said and like it will just explode out of me and you know, that goes And, whichever and the last one, checking in on limiting beliefs about, you know, money or self-worth, um, you could, that would definitely be one, it would be a subset of a larger thing, checking in on self-limiting beliefs, just generally speaking, and money would be a big set of that and just material direction. Ego mm -hmm. is concerned with material direction. The individual ego is not as concerned with material direction. It's concerned with its own unique creativity and a pulse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a moment. Oh, <laughs> that's real true. Cause it's just yeah. like, oh, money. But then it's just like, I feel it's like, I, I feel like- No, the worried. other three gates are dealing with money. Don't worry, money's all yeah. covered with the ego. The, the oh my 51 God. does at times, but that's not, it's, that's not its primary shtick. Yeah, no, that, that I love hearing that because it's like I'll feel that guilt or that pressure. They're like, oh, da, da, da. And it's just like, I can make all this other magic happen if the resources can just be like, if the money could just be handled, I could fix everything. Right. <laughs> so I definitely feel that. News. This is the last slide. And so meditate and envision your dream life, right? But picture it without any constraints. So mm. like whatever you can have, mm. just and even the material aspects. It's like, you know what? I want satin pillows. Picture it. You know, I That's want good. whatever you want, right? It's like, I, I, you know, I want a maid to come in once a week to help me clean. Like, whatever thing, like, just do not put, like, oh, well, it's not realistic. Like, let it all fly. And journal about questions related to your authority, right? Mm -hmm. And be honest. And don't worry about anyone judging what you're writing. Just mm -hmm. give yourself a free pass. And boost your self worth by affirming your deservingness in front of a mirror, like our beautiful photo demonstrates right here. Actually, I can like one up that because um, this is actually some like really cool. So a mirror, a typical mirror, will actually like it reflects your image, right? So it's actually flipping the left and right side, which is why you don't look like yourself, right? Um, and so I actually met this guy who made a true mirror, and I actually purchased one where you can actually see what you actually look like to other people. Whoa. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's crazy. It's it's real crazy because it's like if you look in a regular mirror, like you look a little snide, the light drops from your eyes, the smile gets a little, right. So it's actually confusing your brain because you're seeing the left and the right wrong. And so what he said is, if you look at your eyes in the, in a regular mirror, it's actually reinforcing all the not you, all the anxiety. Oh. Yeah. So now getting this true mirror, and so I'll look at it and I'm like, I'll tell on myself, I love myself, and say these yeah. nice things and connect with myself. So what I kind of see it as is actually reconnecting with the real self as opposed to looking in a regular mirror which is actually reinforcing the not self so love that yeah so wow like, that's what an incredible thing to notice i love that yeah it's really crazy and i really wonder like how much like true mirrors would be able to help people in like actually connecting with themselves seeing themselves with the light and the brightness that other people see them with you know people with like you know different body dysmorphia and different issues or different anxieties to actually reconnect with who we actually are instead of reinforcing the doppelganger Oh, that's wild stuff. Love the doppelganger it. hooked into the not self matrix. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's next? Uh, engage in a challenging yet enjoyable breathing exercise or a workout routine that strengthens your mm -hmm. willpower slash heart. Mm -hmm. Whatever gets that blood pumping, right? Yeah. And you, you know, you already mentioned this. Repeat mantras such as you know, I deserve what I desire. My desires are part of my path you know, all the things. And then, you know, I don't need to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to know everything. I don't need to know. I don't yeah. need to figure it and out. And then, uh, you know, learn especially when you don't know, when you don't know, that's exactly when it, it's too late. You don't know. Sorry. Sorry, Moana. I have to keep yeah. Putting that in there. Yeah, I know. Uh, and learn from successful individuals who helped others mm. and got wealthy doing it so he can show you that you don't need to take a vow of poverty <laughs> let's just like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the what i was looking for yeah, yeah, yeah i got you, you. Don't, I got you. you don't need to do the whole you don't yeah, need to be a threadbare saint right you know, the more stuff i have the more i can share the more i could do with it and create it so exactly. yeah exactly 